In this video series we're going to be looking at how to create a little car racing game using Scratch. Basically all you need to do in this game is to complete three laps of the course in the quickest time possible. I'll take my headphones off now so you can have a listen to how this game sounds and how it looks. I'm going to do one lap of the course to show you how we get around. Every time I hit these red things you'll see that I do speed up a little bit. And in the second lap I'm going to crash into these orange markers just to finish the game off. Okay, so here we go. Alright, so that's how the game basically works. If we were to complete one more lap, it would have hit the finish line and it would have said game over. Hopefully you saw as well that I did hit the green stuff, uh, the grass, on purpose and that does slow your car down. You need to get back on track before you can keep on driving and hopefully you did see as well when I hit those red arrows, I did speed up a little bit. Okay, so cool little game. There's a fair bit to it, so let's get started now. We're going to make a new document in Scratch. And as usual, we are greeted with the Scratch Cat, which we need to get rid of. So go down to your sprites and just delete the cat from your screen. Now the first thing I want to start with today is the backdrop. Okay, so down the bottom here, make sure you've got your stage one backdrop there selected. And what we're going to do is we're going to create our own backdrop. So you need to hit that little paintbrush that says Paint New Backdrop. Now once we have got our... Uh, editor up here, what we need to do is go down and select the colour we want our background. So the colour we want our background is a green colour, we want some grass in the background. Once we've selected the colour we need, just grab your fill bucket here and simply click on the page once. And that's going to fill in your background with that nice green colour. Next thing we want to do is draw the track onto our page. Now to draw the track we're going to use the brush tool up the top here. Okay. For the uh, track colour we're going to choose a light grey like that and you need to adjust your line width down here to the biggest setting possible. Okay, so it's going to be a fairly large track. Now what you need to do is draw a track on your screen. So I'm just going to do a few little loops and bumps and whatnot around here. Try not to go onto the edge of your page. Okay, I know it's a little bit bumpy, but there is our track. Now I'm going to make this area down here a little bit fatter because I'm going to put some markers in where we can actually crash into them in a moment. So make one corner of your track a little bit fatter than the others. Okay. There we go. So I know that looks a little bit dodgy, but just stick with it. We are only making a simple game and that's how it should look for now. The next thing we're going to do is add some power-ups in. So when our users hit these little power-ups, that's going to make them speed up. And draw the power-ups, we're going to use the line tool today, and we're going to choose the colour red. The width of the line needs to be a lot smaller, so adjust your lever there to make the line width nice and skinny. And along the straight sections of your track, we're going to add in about four different power-ups. There's one, two, three, I'm just clicking and dragging here, and four. Okay, I know they're not all exactly the same size, but you get the idea. Basically when our car hits these little power-ups, it's going to speed them up. The next thing we need to draw is some markers or witches hats down in this bottom corner where our user can crash into them, and it will end the game if they do that. To draw those, I'm going to use the rectangle tool. So the rectangle tool there, pick orange for your colour, and make sure you've got this second option here, the fill colour shown. Okay, if you click this left one, it's just going to draw the border of the shape. We actually want to fill our shape in with orange. And holding shift to draw a perfect square, just draw a little square down on your corner. And give it a bit of a rotate so it's in the shape of a diamond. Okay. Once you've got that, I want you to duplicate it by grabbing that little duplicate stamp at the top, clicking on that rectangle once, and just moving it across. And keep it in line with the other one. Then I'm going to grab the duplicate brush again, click on our latest orange marker, and we're going to move that across. Okay, That's probably all I'm going to need, three of them. If you didn't make them as big as mine and you need four, add a fourth one in. Okay, but basically it's going to be looking something like that. Now to finish these markers off, we're going to grab the rectangle tool here, 
and we're going to choose the light grey colour we use for the road and make sure that the fill option is selected and simply cut these in half by drawing a rectangle that covers half of these up. Okay, so it looks something like that. And eventually you get these three orange markers. Now they're a little bit high on the track at the moment. I want to move them down a little bit, so I'm just going to have to grab my select tool here. So that's a little hand with the uh, marquee box around it, and just carefully select those markers, try not to get anything else, and just move them down a little bit. Don't worry about the white box that's appeared. Just want to move them down. Now you grab your fill bucket and just fill in that white space. Okay, so now we've got three orange markers down the bottom of the track there. Okay. So that's our track looking pretty good. Um, one thing we need to add to that now is the finish line and the car. And the way we do that is we're going to bring in some new sprites. Okay, so we're finished with our backdrop for now. What we're going to do in our sprites library is import some new sprites. And the way we do that is hit the third option along, which is the folder. And when you hover over it, it says upload sprite from file. Okay, now in your account, I've given you access to all sorts of different sprites. We've got the finish line here. So let's bring that in first. Just open him up. Comes out quite large. Okay, we're going to fix him up in just a moment. The other thing we're going to upload, so go back to that folder and upload another sprite, is a car. Now you've got your choice of any of these cars. If I haven't given you access to these, you can go into Google Images and all you need to search for is top down view of car and you should be able to find these pictures on there. I'm going to use the yellow car for my game today and as you can see it comes out quite large as well. So I'm going to need to resize these two sprites. Now to resize sprites, it's quite easy. Up the top, you've got this shrink tool. Simply click on it, and then just keep clicking on your sprite until you get it to a good size. Okay, probably still a little bit big. I think that will be a good size for our car. This looks like he fits on the track nicely. Should be able to turn those corners, no worries. Now the finish line, we're going to need to do a bit to this. We're going to need to shrink it first of all, so it's nice and small. It needs to fit in this gap up the top here, so that looks yeah pretty good like that. And we need to edit this so we can rotate it. Okay, so we're going to go to the costumes tab up here and we're going to give this a bit of a rotate. Okay, so we're going to need to select it first of all. Here's our select tool. I want you to just draw a box over the top of your finish line. And you have the option of just giving it a rotate. Okay, you want to try and get this perfectly straight if possible. Otherwise, as close as you can will do. Um, it's quite fiddly. There it is. Got it. Now you need to move this up or down a little bit just so we can make it look pretty even on either end. That looks good. Okay, so I'm happy with that. So now I'm just going to click on the scripts tab up here and you'll see that those changes are applied to our finish line. And you can position that somewhere up the top there. Remember, you can grow it and shrink it a little bit if you need to. So I just grew it. I can shrink it. Whatever you need to do to it, do it now. Okay, but that's looking good. All right, so I'll put my car up to roughly where he's going to start. Might be a little bit big still, that car. I might just shrink him one more time. There we go. That looks a little bit better. Either size would have done, but that will do. Alrighty, so the next thing I'm going to do is just do a little bit of coding and then I will finish this first video off. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do, as always with our games, we're going to go to the events tab here and choose the when clicked option and drag that into our coding area. Alright, so when we click the green flag to start our game, what do we want to do? Okay, well the first thing I want to do is get our car in the right position and facing the right way. Okay, so we want our car facing to the right, pretty much like it is now. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go to the motion tab here and we're going to choose point in direction and put it underneath there. Now we want it pointing right, which is the 90 degree marks. Every time we start our game, that's the direction it's going to point. So that's all good. The next thing we want it to do, we want it to go to this position. Okay, so what we need to do is choose this go to X and Y. 90 and 99 is pretty much where it's sitting now so that's where it's going to start in that position each time we press the green flag so even if my car ends up over here as soon as I press the green flag he goes back to the start position okay so that's all good uh, next thing we might do is bring in some background music 
Okay, so I'm going to make a new script up. So when the green flag's clicked, what I want to do is play a song forever. So it's going to loop over and over again. So bring in your forever loop code first, and then in the sound option here, we're going to need to import a sound. Okay, so the way we import sounds is up along the top here, choose your sounds tab. Just get rid of the pop, we don't need that. And click this last folder here, upload sound from file. Now I've got the music mp3 here, which I downloaded for free off the YouTube sound library. Okay, so if you are looking for some free sounds, the YouTube sound library has stacks that you can pick from. So make sure you go and check that out. Let's do a Google search for it. It is a couple of minutes long, this song. That's why it's taking a little while just to convert into the right format. Just bear with it. It won't take too long. Okay, so there it is there. Now it's quite loud this song, you can see the sound wave is quite large. When you play it, it's pretty angry music and it's pretty loud. What we're going to need to do is turn that down. So you need to highlight this song. And to highlight it all, you just press Control A. Control A just highlights all of that. And in your effects, just make it softer, probably twice. Okay, If you play that, it's a lot softer now. The sound wave isn't as big and it's a lot softer, so that's good. So going back to your scripts tab now, your first option there is play sound music to mp3 and the second one is play sound music to mp3 until done. That's the one you want, the second one there. And just put that inside your forever loop. So that's going to play the sound of the music until it finishes, then it's going to go back to the start and play it again. Okay. By the time you get around this track though, you probably won't even be anywhere near the end of the song, so you probably won't hear it repeat. Okay, so that's got our music going. When we press the green flag, our music starts playing. Next thing we want to do is put in the time. Okay, we want to time ourselves as we go around this track. Okay, so what we're going to do is make another new script up. So when the green flag is clicked, and you might remember from previous tutorials, to make a time up, you need to create a variable. Okay, so something that holds data and that data can change over time. So this variable holds the time and it's going to keep going up the longer our game is played. So go to your data tab here and make a variable called time. Click OK on that. Make sure for all sprites is selected. And you'll see that your time appears on the page. I'm just going to put it in the top right hand corner for now. Okay. So first of all, we need to set the time to zero. Each time we run our game, we want that time reset back to zero. And the other thing we're going to do is we're going to show variable time. Okay, Later on in the tutorial, we're actually going to hide that time if we crash and make it disappear. Okay, So we want to make sure that when we restart our game, we're actually showing the time in the top corner there. Alrighty. Um, after that, we're just going to wait one second before the timer actually starts. We're going to have a little delay at the start of our game and then it's going to start. Okay, so we're going to have that one second delay before the timer kicks off. And then once that one second delay is over, we're going to start the clock going. Okay, so what we're going to do is go back to the data tab here and we're going to change the time not by one second increments, but we're going to write 0 0.1, so tenths of a second. Okay, and we're going to put that inside a forever loop so it's always going up while our game's playing. Okay, so we can put that up there. Now, if we were to play that, watch the time here, it's not going to work properly. Okay, you can see it's just going mental. <laughs> Looks a bit crazy. What we need to do is just bring this in the control tab, wait one second, and put it below that time and change it to 0 0.1 as well. So a tenth of a second. Okay, that's going to fix everything up. Now when we run our game, you can see our time going up. Had that little one second delay at the start, and now our time just keeps going up. Okay, so that's the code there to get our time working. Now one last thing I want to do in this video before we uh, stop it is on this yellow car here, it's possible for us to crash into these markers. Now when we crash, we want to change the costume of this car so it doesn't look like just a normal car. We want to make it look like it's actually had a crash. So in the costumes tab up here, what we're going to do is right click on this little picture here and duplicate it. So now we've got yellow car and yellow car 2. This is the one that it's going to change to if it crashes. 
And I think the simplest way to make a crash is just grab your line tool and make it a little bit thicker if you want. Just choose some red lines and just start drawing some red lines across the page. I probably could have made those a little bit thicker. Never mind. Now, I know that looks a little bit funny at the moment. Trust me, it'll look better later on. Let's make this line a little bit thicker. I'm going to grab some orange now, draw some orange in there. I guess if anything it's going to make it look a bit like an explosion's taken place. And then I'm just going to get some yellow. Should still stand out on top of the yellow car. Okay, just add some yellow in there as well. So that's what the car's going to look like, or down to this size, when it has a crash. Okay, but to start with, we just want the yellow car there. Okay, so what we need to do is just tell our program that we are starting with the yellow car and not the crashed car. And the way we do that is we go over to this looks tab here. Okay, and we're going to go down, where is it? Switch costume to yellow car 2. We're going to put that underneath our first bit of code and make sure it says yellow car. So when we start our game or when we click the green flag, we need to make sure that our car costume is the first yellow car. Okay, if we were to choose yellow car 2, it would start with this one, okay, which looks like that. We don't want that. We want to start with yellow car. Okay, that's the first yellow car. Alright, so that's good. When we click on the flag, we have the yellow car up here. It's facing to the right and it's in that starting position. So that's that top bit of code done. Second one is playing the music in the background. So we play the sound music until it's done. It just loops over and over again. And this final bit of code here is just setting our little timer to go up by tenths of a second. Okay, so it sets the time to zero as soon as it starts. It makes sure we can see that time there, okay, because we are going to hide it when we crash. So it just brings it back up in case we have crashed. And then it waits one second before it actually starts changing the time. And it just goes up in 0 0.1 increments. Alrighty. So that's the basis or basics of our game setup, sorry. Okay, what I'm going to get you to do there is just go to File and Save As. If you haven't done so already, make a new folder for it, and it's going to be called Car Racing Game something like that, you call it whatever you want and I'll give it the file name car racing game and save it okay that's all I'm going to do now for the first part of this tutorial in the second part I'm going to show you how to get the car moving crashing and also speeding up when we hit those red markers so I'll see you in the second video